All right, let's have a conversation. With the drafted mold that we used in the sand casting frame, there were three separate orientations where the sprue came to the face of the star, to the back of the star, as well as to the point of the star. And through each sand casting test, we checked what orientation worked best and what were the working properties that we saw. And then because Cuttlefish only allows for one, we just verified that when you sprue to the point, you get similar results. So we're gonna go through these one by one. So <clears throat> the first example, we sprued to the point, and you can see closely, let's just make sure the camera can focus here. You can see closely that we got all the detail, including the details found as defects from the print process, okay? And that's great. It's repeating exactly what we want. And then you can see where the gouges were carved for the vents. So those can easily be trimmed off. You can see that we had a very narrow gate for our point, which meant our metal was very hot. We had good flow properties and it went in and filled this entire mass. Okay. Without any issue on flow dynamics. Now, when we sprued to the back, you'll notice our star still looks like our star. There are a couple of little defects, but these pits are most likely due to sand that fell down during either the metal pouring in and floated around or when the mold was rammed back up. These defects are not defects that I would be particularly concerned about from a sand casting perspective because that is the nature of sand casting. And then you can look at the back. This this sprue, the gate, is very, very wide, so there's going to be a lot of work to remove it from the part and only three of our five blind vents cast. Okay, so you know that we had pretty good casting dynamics. You can see on the very tip here, that vent tried to form, but on the tip here, there's only a slight indication that the tip was forming. And you'll also notice that there's some volumetric draw. There's a divot on the back of the star here. And that tells you that this button, the sprue gate, was a little too big and it was able to draw some of the volume out of the core. And generally what you want is your part to be able to pull from the button, not the other way around. And so finding where to put that choke point between your sprue gate and your part is one of those things you learn with practice. Okay, but we want examples of everything good. I like the star part because it shows you how to cast a big volume right? Small tapers, and there's a whole bunch of different flow dynamics you get. Plus, it's a pretty simple part to replicate. So now, we sprued to the point. And if you look, there's a lot of problems with this casting. The first problem is, if you look at the back, we have a ton of flashing. And it's not clear whether the flashing occurred from ramming up the mold or the metal just breaking things out. But if you look, the way the metal entered the very tip of, of the part, this volumetric draw here where metal should be implies either the sand was pushed out during the casting process and shuffled to this edge or sucked back in as the metal cooled from the top. And so you notice that that, that choke point where we go from small to big, right, helps a lot. But we also notice that this gate, this opening, the sprue, is smaller than it is when we sprued to the back. And that's because cleanup here is harder. And so you don't get the right volumetric flow. Like you can tell we had a good cast because all five of our vents flowed. But then there was some fluid dynamics that were detrimental to the part as the metal went in, right? So we know that our casting temperature was good, our pour time was good but the flow dynamics of the metal going into the part destroyed some of the part in its cooling and its forming and its casting. So we may try that again, but this is the three versions that we're looking at for the sand cast parts, right? So we have sprue to the point, sprue to the back, sprue to the face, and sprue to the point and back turned out beautifully and these are the edges we want to preserve and sprue to the face a lot of cleanup the casting was done well as seen by the vents but the final product is not something worth keeping so now this 
Here's the cuttlefish one. And we did the cuttlefish one just to show that you can apply a texture from the cuttlefish casting. And that's going to come with, and there's still little bits of dust still in the part. But as far as a replication goes, it's pretty good. Um, the one thing that probably didn't happen was I didn't get a full cast. And I think that's just because the casting part wasn't pressed in as deeply to the mold. Or there was some blind venting issues that we we're having at the points. Because it looks like this point on either end cast well. And these ones cast a little short. You can see an indication of a vent here, but not an indication of a vent there, which implies I could put more vents in. I could have been a little hotter in the cast, or simply that when gravity is working with you, it's very easy to fill these bottom two footies. But once you get up to these top points, a little extra venting would be helpful. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is trim all of the buttons off. And we just use these little baby bolt cutters. Okay, super simple tool. And you always want to take and cut your sprue just above where you think the rest of your point is. So if you sprued to the point, give yourself a little extra material. You can always cut it off later. But what you don't need to do is fight with it for the rest of the time. So I always like having the extra vent there because we know where the star stops. to the point give us a better view of what happened one two three and this one is a little thick so when you sprue to the back with a, a sprue gate this wide getting in there with the bolt cutters and going around the vent is not likely so this will probably need to be cut off with either a hacksaw or a jeweler saw I'm inclined to use the jeweler saw but now you get a good view of how the stars compare from the front to the printed part. 